ඔෆිස් එකේදි විතරක් නෙවෙයි මම දැන් ගෙදරදිත් IDD කෝස් ගන්න SLT ෆෝන් එකේ ඔබේ නිවසේ SLT දුරකථනය දැන් IDD පහසුකම සහිතයි making headlines for first at 9 fellowship of the commonwealth president maitri pala sirisena bears witness to the queen hinting at succession as another birthday approaches this week i am reminded of the extraordinary journey we have been on it remains a great pleasure and honor to serve you as head of the commonwealth but will also give the commonwealth a renewed relevance to its to all its citizens for going safety a man and his four would be saviors fall into an ammonia tank raising eyebrows dr gunadas amarasekhar suspicious over jvp's proposal to abolish the executive presidency jvp's suggestion to bring a proposal to abolish the executive presidency we th- think is part of the conspiracy tighter regulations all three wheelers required to issue receipts from tomorrow Change of God, 86-year-old Raul Castro hands over Cuba's presidency. A very good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Rinesh Bongsu. The Buckingham Palace in London played host to the 25th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting today under the grace of Queen Elizabeth II. President Maithripal Sirisena also attended the meeting representing Sri Lanka, which saw the participation of 53 heads of state. Speaking at the opening ceremony, Queen Elizabeth II tacitly addressed the issue of succession in what is widely regarded to be her last Heads of Government meeting as she no longer travels long distances. distances rather. Meanwhile, President Maithripal Sirisena is... scheduled to address Chogum 2018 at the executive sessions ongoing at Lancaster House in London. Heads of state representing 53 Commonwealth countries participated in the 25th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting today. It was hosted at the famous Buckingham Palace in London. This year's summit was held under the theme Towards a Common Future. <laughs> President Maithripala Sirisena also arrived at the palace to represent Sri Lanka in the summit. After the arrival of the heads of state it was the turn of the royal family including the head of the commonwealth and 91 year old british monarch queen elizabeth ii Once everyone had settled british crown prince charles the prince of wales addressed the esteemed gathering This is an occasion to celebrate with renewed pride our remarkable commonwealth family and so ladies and gentlemen i pray that this commonwealth heads of government meeting will not only revitalize the bonds between our countries but will also give the commonwealth a renewed relevance to its to all its citizens finding practical solutions to their problems and giving life to their aspirations by doing so the commonwealth can be a cornerstone for the lives of future generations just as it has been for so many of us Delivering a statement, the British Prime Minister Theresa May honored the Queen's dedication to the Commonwealth during her 66-year-long reign and called for a unified force to tackle 21st century challenges. Over many decades, this organization has brought together nations young and old, large and small, to celebrate our common bonds and to work to our mutual benefit. There have been difficulties, successes, controversies, but I believe wholeheartedly in the good that the commonwealth can do for in the commonwealth we have an incredible opportunity an opportunity to show just what can be achieved through coordinated action and cooperation how we support our most vulnerable member states as we tackle climate change and improve the health of our oceans creating a more sustainable commonwealth how we develop through trade pushing back against protectionism for a more prosperous commonwealth how we respond to threats to the rules based international order and from cyber attacks creating a more secure commonwealth and how in all of this we advance those common values which our organization has always stood for democracy human rights tolerance and the rule of law so that we establish a fairer commonwealth On behalf of all of you assembled here in Buckingham Palace, 
I want to offer my heartfelt thanks to Your Majesty, Head of the Commonwealth. Over many years, you have been the Commonwealth's most steadfast and fervent champion. You have been true to the deepest values of the Commonwealth, that the voice of the smallest member country is worth precisely as much as that of the largest, that the wealthiest and the most vulnerable stand shoulder to shoulder. You have seen us through some of our most serious challenges, and we commit to sustaining this Commonwealth which you have so carefully nurtured. For your service, for your dedication, for your constancy, we thank you. In keeping with tradition, Queen Elizabeth II inaugurated the 25th Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. In her address, the monarch hinted at succession in what is widely regarded to be her last Heads of Government meeting, as she no longer travels long distances. As another birthday approaches this week, I am reminded of the extraordinary journey we have been on and how much good has been achieved. It remains a great pleasure and honour to serve you as Head of the Commonwealth and to observe with pride and satisfaction that this is a flourishing network. It is my sincere wish that the Commonwealth will continue to offer stability and continuity for future generations and will decide that one day the Prince of Wales should carry on the important work started by my father in 1949. By continuing to treasure and reinvigorate our associations and activities, I believe we will secure a safer, more prosperous and sustainable world for those who follow us. A world where the Commonwealth's generosity of spirit can bring its gentle touch of healing and hope to all. It gives me great pleasure to declare this meeting of the Commonwealth Heads of Government open. In the meantime, President Maitri Palasiri Sena met with Secretary of State for International Trade in UK, Liam Fox, yesterday. Speaking to the President, Fox stated that the British government is ready for direct investment in Sri Lanka while increasing investments in the country. While appreciating the constant cooperation of the British government, the President said that the government has paid special attention on new investment opportunities in the sectors of power, livestock and tourism. President Sirisena also met with Lord Naseby, a member of the British House of Lords yesterday, who commended Sri Lanka's development programme and ensured fullest assistance as a true ally of the country. Also praising the programme of reconciliation, the Baron said that the duty done by Sri Lankan in the post-war era is in quite good standard compared to other countries. Furthermore, he said that it is a matter of grief that the precise and sufficient details are not provided to Europe and Geneva, and he would extend his full cooperation to acknowledge them about the true circumstances. President Sirisena was in turn thankful for Lord Naseby's personal intervention in the matter. Meanwhile, pro LGT supporters began demonstrations near the venue of the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London. The protest came hours before President Maitripa Sirisena's scheduled address at the Chogam 2018. Other Dharanas, Yuvraj Atakoral, are currently in London, reported that the pro-LTT protesters are claiming that the government's mechanism to probe cases or disappearances and missing persons during the period of conflict in Sri Lanka remains slow. Protesters also call for a solution beyond constitutional reforms while demanding that political prisoners should be immediately released. Five people lost their lives in an accident in a rubber factory in the area of Ballapitya in Horana today. It happened when an employee of the factory fell into a tank full of ammonia. Unfortunately, his would-be rescuers also shared the same fate, while eight others were admitted to hospital with breathing issues, brought on by ammonia inhalation. Police have arrested the suspects in the factory and investigations are underway. An employee of a rubber factory had fallen into an ammonia tank after experiencing breathing difficulties while trying to clean it. Another employee who had attempted to save him had also met with the same fate. Other employees had called for help from area residents, but during their attempts to rescue the two individuals, three others had fallen in as well.
Eventually, all five individuals were taken out of the tank, but their rescuers were also faced with breathing difficulties and they were rushed to the Hurana base hospital. The tank is 12 feet deep and it consisted of two feet of ammonia. All five individuals were pronounced dead upon admission. The two employees who died are 33-year-old Varuna Chandrasekara, who worked as a chemical technician, and the other is 40-year-old Aryapala, who worked as a labourer. The other three people who died have been identified as 41-year-old Priyanta Kumara Pereira, 32-year-old Dilipa Kasun Lokupatiranage, and 30-year-old Lal Pushpa Kumara. Meanwhile, investigations were carried out by officials of the disaster unit at the Hurana Urban Council to see if there were more victims and also to stop ammonia from spreading. <laughs> Residents of the area meanwhile gathered outside the factory and expressed their anger, claiming that a toxic chemical is emanating from the factory. <laughs> meanwhile, additional magistrate of Horana, Kanti Kanangara, inspected the site later on. Police and riot police had to be deployed as the residents staged violent protests in front of the factory. The police went on to arrest the manager of the factory and said the owner will also be arrested soon. Now, three-wheeler dri drivers, rather, island-wide, will have to issue receipts for their passengers from tomorrow onwards. It becomes a mandatory requirement as a relevant regulation by the National Council for Road Safety comes into effect tomorrow. The chairman of the council, Dr. Cicero Kodagoda, says that three-wheeler drivers had ample time to get this sorted. Three-wheelers island-wide will have to comply with the regulations by the National Council for Road Safety, which makes issuing receipts for passengers a mandatory requirement with effect from tomorrow. The National Council for Road Safety says that people can lodge complaints at the nearest police station if three-wheeler drivers fail to issue receipts to passengers. The council says that the regulations was brought to ensure a quality three-wheeler service in the country. It added that last six months was a concession period given for the three-wheeler drivers to get the necessary equipment. Three-wheel meter law implement from the 20th of this April. The meter should be having a receipt issuing unit also. This is that ministry decided to implement this in the last year because of the three-wheel associations request minister decided to give a six month period for fix this meter to their three wheel taxis now first of the april is the final day now this is more than enough them to fix the meter for their taxis so then without any delay that we want to implement this from the 20th of this month you are watching sri lanka's award winning news channel the Verena 24-7. Welcome back. The Reforms Committee of the United National Party has decided to forward the proposal on the party's new office bearers to the Working Committee on the 26th. The members of the Reforms Committee said that appointments will be made before the 30th of April. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe commenced his duties for the new year with a ceremony held at Temple Trees. Various parliamentarians and ministers graced the occasion along with the staff at the Premier's office. <laughs> Views were also forthcoming on the much publicized restructuring of the UNP. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe should continue to remain as the leader of the party. He is the most suited person in the party and in the country for the presidential election in 2020. My disappointment is that committees that are appointed do not include women. I raised my voice then 
and will continue to do so. I believe that as the Prime Minister promised, we will be able to continue this journey with new faces and positions. Meanwhile, the advisory committee appointed to look into the party restructuring met under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh this evening. Members of the committee express views on their way out of the discussion. Many say various things. No matter what is said, I will continue my development programs. The Federation of National Organizations is of the view that JVP's decision to bring a proposal to abolish the executive presidency is part of a conspiracy geared towards dividing the country. Speaking to First at Nine, convener of the Federation, Dr. Gunadas Amarasekar, opined that any proposal suggested by Western powers in an attempt to destabilize the country and disturb the unitary state of the nation should be prevented at any cost. JVP's suggestion to bring a proposal to abolish the executive presidency is part of the conspiracy because after all, this whole process, this change of regime, all those who are aimed at one thing, that is to bring about a constitutional change to divide the country and provide a federal solution. This has to be prevented. If you have tried to abolish the executive presidency at this time, that will destabilize the country. Dr. Gunadar Samarasekara went on to call members of parliament to vote against the proposal and prevent external powers from influencing their agendas on Sri Lanka, risk the country of division and destabilization. They are very keen to have this government going so that they can get their agenda achieved through this, this government. Their agenda is nothing but to bring the constitution that to divide the country and to usher in federalism. If those people who join the UNP, those 26 MPs, they will have an overall majority and they can bring any kind of, uh, you know, proposal suggested by the Western powers to divide the country. For the more enlightened people, especially the Mahasanga, to take it up. Let's take a look at some stories from across Sri Lanka. The government announced that the public and bank holiday on the 1st of May has been effectively cancelled. The government's information department issued a special announcement advising the public that the National Vesak Week will be held from the 26th of this month to the 2nd of May, while the May Day or Labour Day will be celebrated on the 7th of May. The relevant gazette notification was issued by Minister of Home Affairs Vajira Abhivardhana on the 6th of April. Former Minister of Economic Development Basil Rajapaksa commenced his duties for the new year at his political office in Nelumavata Bataramulla. The minister told media that he is ready to face the steps taken by certain individuals to divide the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna. A wild elephant was found dead at a paddy field in the area of Mahindagama in Balikanda. The woman who owns the paddy field had informed Balikanda wildlife officials of the approximately 9-foot cow elephant. The situation took a turn when wildlife officials arrived at the scene as locals charged that they were attempting to arrest the owner of the paddy field. Nevertheless, the woman was not arrested and an investigation into the elephant's death is currently underway. An Indian push to connect more cities via airports as an expanding middle class increasingly takes to the skies is set to help propel the country's demand for jet fuel to record highs this year. A Singapore-based energy consultancy, FGE, says that India's airport tr air transport rather, sector has huge potential to grow in the long term given its large geographical expanse and growing consumer affluence. According to the International Air Transport Association, years of breakneck economic expansion have helped India become the world's fastest growing major domestic aviation market. Several industry analysts estimate that average monthly demand for jet fuel could break through 700,000 tons this year, up from 2017's record 623,000 tons and from 566,000 tons in 2016. That would be an annual growth rate of around 12%, comparable to what China achieved during its main boom years in the early 2000s. The latest government data showed that India used 2.02 million tons of aviation fuel from January to March this year, up 9.4% from a year earlier. A Singapore-based energy consultancy, FGE, forecasts a 10.5% year-on-year increase in Indian demand for jet fuel in 2018, while energy consultancy Trifecta expects growth of 12-15%. to 15%. Under a flagship government scheme, 
The Airports Authority of India is set to invest $2.7 billion in upgrading airport infrastructure over 2019 to 2020. Talk that Saudi Arabia has its sights on $80 to $100 a barrel of oil again and of more U.S. sanctions on Russia ignited a rally in commodities and resource stocks today, though the potential boost to inflation hit fixed income assets. It was said to be the strongest day for the commodity complex in eight months as Brent crude futures climbed past $74 a barrel after a, three, after a near 3% jump overnight. The surge came on a Reuters report that OPEC's new price hawk, Saudi Arabia, would be happy for crude to rise to $80 or even $100, a sign Riyadh will seek no changes to a supply-cutting deal, even though the agreement's original target is now within sight. Colombo stocks snapped the six-day winning streak to close in negative territory amid lackluster trading. The ASPI fell 23.26 index points to close at 6,528.57, and the S&P SL20 index edged lower by 14.29 index points to 3,676.50. Market turnover was low at 270 million rupees, and 37% of it came from Ceylon Coal Stores and Union Bank. We have Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for a detailed review. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 3048.03 billion rupees. Today's foreign purchases were 77.2 million rupees and foreign sales were 20.1 million rupees. There were two crossings today and the crossing turnover was 57 million rupees. The Sri Lankan rupee ended higher today as greenback sales by exporters outpaced dollar demand from importers. The rupee, which was traded at 156 rupees and 12 cents per dollar in the early trade, ended at 156 rupees and 20 to 35 cents, slightly firmer from yesterday's close of 156 rupees and 30 to 40 cents. Let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against the dollar. Premier News Channel, other than 24-7. Welcome back. A 57-year-old bureaucrat replaced Raul Castro as the president of Cuba today, launching a new political era. The National Assembly announced that Miguel Mario Diaz Canel Bermudez had been approved as the sole candidate for president. The 86-year-old Castro will still remain head of the Communist Party. His departure from the presidency is nonetheless a symbolically charged moment for a country that has been under the absolute rule of one family since the revolution, first by Fidel Castro and for the last decade his younger brother. U.S. President Donald Trump sounded an alarm this morning of his planned talks with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un yesterday, threatening to walk out of the discussions if the discussions are not fruitful. Rather, At a joint news conference, he and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said maximum pressure must be maintained on North Korea over nuclear disarmament. Abe is at Trump's Mar-a-Lago Resort in Florida for talks. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania welcomed Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and his wife Aki to dinner at Trump's Malago Resort in Palm Beach, Florida yesterday. Trump and Abe said they had agreed to intensify trade consultations between the two long-time allies. At a joint news conference earlier in the day, Trump related his desire to do something about U.S. trade imbalances with Tokyo. He said earlier that he thought the United States would soon be able to trim its trade deficit with Japan. Meanwhile, Trump confirmed earlier that CIA Director Mike Pompeo had made a secret trip to North Korea to meet him. He said Pompeo had forged a good relationship with Kim and that the meeting had gone very smoothly. 
Trump, however, said that he hoped a planned meeting with the North Korean leader to discuss denuclearization would be successful, but he would walk out if it was not. If the meeting when I'm there is not fruitful, I will respectfully leave the meeting and we'll continue what we're doing or whatever it is that will continue, but something will happen. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced yesterday that Turkey's presidential and parliamentary elections would be brought forward by over a year than planned, saying the country urgently needed to make the switch to an executive presidency. Erdogan said he made the decision after speaking to the head of the nationalist MHP party, who a day earlier had floated the prospect of early polls. Turkey has brought forward elections to the 24th of June, a year and a half ahead of schedule, that could pave the way for a single-party state with few checks on the power of the president. Turkey's president Recep Tayyip Erdogan announced the new date after meeting Davlet Bacheli, his ally and head of the nationalist bloc in parliament, who had called on Tuesday for early presidential and parliamentary elections. The winner will assume the presidency of the Turkish Republic with broad powers that were approved after a constitutional referendum last year. Let's now take a look at some of the emerging stories from across the world. A devastating earthquake in Indonesia has killed three people. It is understood that more than 300 homes together with several schools and mosques have been affected by the quake with at least 20 people hospitalized. Three men burst into Nigeria's Senate yesterday and snatched the legislature's ceremonial mace. Decisions taken in the Senate cannot be approved without the mace, an ornamental staff which symbolizes the authority of Nigeria's legislature. Australian scientists said today that a failure to address climate change will lead to a dramatically smaller Great Barrier Reef following a report detailing the extent of the damage from record sea temperatures around the world heritage sites in 2016. Warm seas around the reef killed a third of a 700-kilometer stretch of coral in 2016. Saudi Arabia launched its first commercial movie theatre yesterday, ending a nearly 40-year ban on cinemas. A red carpet invitation-only gala event attracted senior government officials, foreign dignitaries and select industry figures to watch Marvel's superhero movie Black Panther on a 45-foot screen in Riyadh. Sri Lankan sportsmen and women who shined at the Commonwealth Games held in the Gold Coast of Australia were treated to a reception today under the patronage of new Minister of Sports Faisal Mustafa. The event, which was, headed, which was held at the auditorium of the Minister of Sports, also saw the participation of former subject minister Dayasiri Jayasekara. The reception hosted under the auspices of Minister of Provincial Councils and Local Government, who is also the recently appointed Minister of Sports Faisal Mustafa. Sri Lankan Olympic medalist Susantika Jaisinghe and various other officials were also present at the event. Subsequently, Minister Mustafa commenced duties as the new Minister of Sports at the Duncan White Auditorium at the Ministry. Later, both the former and incumbent Ministers of Sport expressed their views. We were able to win six medals for the country at Commonwealth Games after eight years. This is a victory as a country. I call this meeting to felicitate athletes who won one silver and five bronze medals and not as a function and to assume duties. My position here is temporary. Meanwhile, journalists questioned former Minister of Sports Daya Siri Jaisekar as to what would happen to the program he launched during his tenure to lead the national cricket team along a new path with the cooperation of various cricketing experts. In response, the former minister asked the question be posed to the current subject minister and in turn, when contacted, Minister Mustafa noted that he is only a temporary appointment and cannot comment on the matter. <laughs> Kolkata delivered a professional performance to beat Rajasthan by seven wickets yesterday, putting their 2018 campaign in the Indian Premier League back on track with back-to-back -back victories. The highly rated Kolkata spinners restricted Rajasthan to 160 runs for eight before opener Robin Uttapa, Nitish Rana and captain Dinesh Karthik did the job with the bat as the visitors cruised to victory in just 18.5 overs. 
Batch number 15 and welcome to Jaipur. Rajasthan put into bat were not able to build on the start provided by Captain Ajinkya Rahane and Darcy Short. The trio of Piyush Chawla, Kuldeep Yadav and part-timer Nitish Rana conceded 52 runs in 10 overs, sharing four wickets among themselves. And his head is down because the ball has gone straight up. Kolkata Knight Riders were always in control of the chase despite losing Chris Lynn in the first over. Robin Uttapa put in a show that is expected of him, entertaining the crowd with a blazing knock that comprised of six fours and two sixes. Captain Dinesh Karthik then batted responsibly alongside Rana, taking Kolkata home comfortably to give them a seven-wicket win. Everyone that has come along to support the Knight Riders. Shenla Fernando is at the Weather Center with your forecast first evening edition. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. A very good evening and welcome to Forecast First. Your temperatures for tomorrow are to vary between 21 and 33 degrees Celsius with the lowest expected in the central hills. We're looking at the map. A low pressure zone will form from the south of the island and will gradually disappear. Sunny weather is only forecasted in Mena as many areas of the island including Jaffna, Waunia and Radhapura, Kandy, Colombo, Gaul and Matara as well as Hambantota will experience showers and thunder showers. That's all we have from the Weather Centre tonight. Up next is your City by City forecast. You are watching Sri Lanka's award-winning news channel, Other Verena 24-7. Well, that's all we have from other there in a first at nine. But before we go, we will take you to scuba diving off the beach of Nilavali. Located along the eastern coast of Sri Lanka, diving off this beach provides great sights as this marine park consists of live corals, black tip reef sharks, and shoals of reef fish and turtles. Hope you enjoy. Good night. Information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premium news channel, Other Verena 24 7.